Alhamdulillah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalam Ala sayyidil anbiya Wa muslim Wa ala alihi Wa ashabihi ajma'in Wa man ihtada bihadihi Ila yawmidini Amma ba'da Allahumma rabbi Shuhli sadri Wa yassili amri Wahlal uqdatan Min lisani Yafqahu qawli Alhamdulillah We praise Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala And we send Salawat and salutations on our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all those who followed him until the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa taala has blessed us to come to you again with another reminder from the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah taala. And today we'll be touching the 21 hadith. We're going to the last half of the compilation of Imam Nawawi 40 hadith. And a reminder for myself and our audience that this is not our series that we've been doing is not just for lecture it's not really a purpose of lecturing to one another but it is as reminders from these beautiful scenes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and each one of these hadiths there can be so much to talk about even from various scholars there are so many lectures about them but we have been trying to highlight a few important aspects and few important points that relate to these hadiths that we can take lessons from them and inshallah we can implement them in our life and today brings us to a very beautiful hadith again narrated by Sufyan bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu anna rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna hu qala li rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa huwa qala qul tu ya rasulallah qul li fil islami qawlan la as'alu Anhu ahadan gayuraka that tell me something in Islam, tell me such a word and such a statement in Islam in which I will not ask, I will not need to ask anyone other than you. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him an answer, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Qul amantu billah thumma staqim. Say, I believe in Allah and then be steadfast. Subhanallah. The advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this hadith we see again it brings us to the important aspect of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said that uti tu jawami al kalim that I have been given concise speech. This was a blessing of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was given comprehensive speech, concise speech that his words were short and brief, but the meaning subhanallah was so tremendous. And this is a, this hadith itself is one of those miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the many miracles of his concise and comprehensive speech. The questioner asked Rasulullah some such a statement, such a question of something that he will not need to ask anyone else throughout his life. Such a question that Rasulullah should teach him something, tell him of something that he will not need to ask any person throughout his life. He will be sufficient with it. He will not need to ask anyone something else in regards to the aspect. And Rasulullah combined for this questioner two phrases in his answer and that is say I believe in Allah he's telling the questioner say I believe in Allah and then be steadfast the complete essence of one declaration of Iman and one declaration of belief and the application of one's life through every difficulty and and, per, and perseverance throughout our life this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this person his words is instructing the companion radiallahu anhu that he should always after saying his belief he should always renew his iman not just we he say aman to billah he believed in allah and he remained and he left it as that but rasulullah sallallahu is showing him is reminding him to review your iman review your faith look into your faith introspect yourself and look into how a person iman is and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also hinting at the fact that this should not just be from the tongue but the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be in the, from the heart also so qul amantu billah say you believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasulullah some continue some must take him and be steadfast be steadfast in on the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be steadfast on refraining oneself from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And continue, be steadfast and, and continuous on 
action, good actions that can draw us near and draw us mercy and draw us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this effect even mentioned in the Quran regarding to believers, regarding to those that say, that say the shahada, regarding to those that take the testimony in faith and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized in the Quran with the verse in Surah Fussilat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes this aspect of a person that takes iman. He, he constantly review his iman. He constantly review his belief. And he is steadfast on, uh, on what comes after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the translation of the verse, that really those who have said, Rabbun Allah, our Rabb, our sustainer, our, our Allah, our Rabb, our sustainer and our provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who say that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And then they remain on steadfastness. After acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Lord, they believe in Allah, then these people, they remain on steadfastness. What happens? تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Malaika, the angels, descend upon them. The angels will descend upon them, saying, Allah تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا That do not be fearful, do not fear for what you have to go forward to. Do not fear for what you will go forward to meet in the hereafter. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And do not grieve for what you have left behind. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ And then the angels give them glad tidings to glad tidings to Jannah for that Jannah, for that paradise of that Jannah which you have been promised. And Umar radiallahu anhu he mentioned regards to this Umar bin Khattab anhu, he says that these people they are steadfast on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not they do not swerve they do not turn they do not even with the slightest movement away from that of the under the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not even the slightest movement away from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these people do not this is what he's explaining Umar radiallahu anhu has explained the aspect of what steadfastness and what istiqama is referring to so this means that they are firm upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them in all matters of belief, in all matters of speech, in all matters of action. It is not just that we see our belief, but most importantly, and the, and the most important aspect, which many a times we say good, or we are very good at talking as we delivering lectures, or we listening to advice. The speaker may be very good, or we ourselves may be very good in talking something, but in reality what we talk that is the knowledge but what do we do what are we doing what is our actions our practice are we living by our word as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran lima taquluna ma la taf'alun why do you say of that which you do not do what is the use of our knowledge when we do not practice it so similarly our iman to be steadfast in our iman we know we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We review our iman that everything that comes after that is for us to be steadfast upon. Obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refrain from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tests and trials will come when we accept our iman. And that is the importance of why we need to be steadfast. Not just by merely saying La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and we attain Jannah and we say yes, Alhamdulillah, we don't have to do any other thing. Jannah is already this time for me but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us again in the Quran that the mankind thinks that they will be left alone by saying we believe in Allah and they will not be tested so this is the aspect my respect to gathering where we need to be steadfast upon after saying we believe in Allah after affirming our believe we have to be steadfast on whatever comes after that and this is why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he reminds the companion of this aspect and uh, it was so comprehensive that even though we believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to be steadfast we have to be steadfast in what comes after that or in the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refraining from any act of disobedience allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And in conclusion, for us having istiqamah and having this steadfastness in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it may require us to differentiate and not to practice the customs and traditions that we may, we may find <coughs> among our folks, among our community. Because being steadfast is being able to follow the haq, the truth of what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have told us and what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us. Being steadfast is what we have to follow the truth whether everyone is against it and being steadfast means we have to stick on that truth where every other one, every other it follows something different. But steadfastness in our time, we have to be steadfast in our action and we do not have to count our action. As, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in the hadith that be steadfast, be firm in your action and don't count your good action, the good deeds that you do, do not count them because know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows best of your action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what your action is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued the hadith and he said, Know that the best action a person can do, the best of your action is that of prayer. Afdal a'mal is prayer. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa continued. And he mentioned to remind us that for us to be steadfast and for us to be able to continue on steadfastness, we need to always turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua in prayer, in salawat, and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance because it is only the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will be able to attain perfection or which will be able to attain close to perfection and which will be able to get all the good qualities. So I hope and pray like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us all istiqamah, he grant us all steadfastness in his worship, in obeying him and follow the commands that he has laid down for us. And follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala help us and protect us all, that we do not take our iman for granted, and especially with the trial times that we are facing and we are living in a, in today, in our current day, that our iman is more at risk, uh, as as it is a sign of the coming towards the last days, and at the same time with our iman, we have to show much more steadfastness with all the tests and the trials that is facing us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can die with the kalima la ilaha illallah in our lips and in our heart. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can continue being firm on our iman, firm on our obedience to Him until our last breath. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.